Okay, so basically, I'm just going to go over the things that I found. Uh, a lot of it uh, came from a pick yesterday. Uh, and um, it was sort of like an old shed, uh, chicken barn type thing that uh, they've just been using for storage. And uh, they're clearing a lot of the stuff out, so I got to go in and have a look around. And I found a, a fair amount of good stuff. Um, so here we go. The key to this pick was actually um, being able to see things other than their original intended purposes, um, how they could be used now, uh, and you can find value in items that normally uh, you would probably pass because you might not be able to specifically come up with a reason to use them, um, but if you think hard uh, with quite a few of these things, you, you can come up with some great ideas. Uh, one of the best things I got are all of these hay, uh, hay forks. Um, they're, they look to be hand forged. Uh, a lot of them are uh, probably all, I would say, 19th century or turn of the 19th century, uh, 20th century. Um, they can be used for all kinds of different things. Um, they look pretty dangerous as it is, but I've had my tetanus shot, which everybody should do if you're ever going out on picks. Um, and yeah, these can be used for lots of different things. I actually know artists who use these for all kinds of purposes. Um, yeah, but it was just one of the things that I thought, you know, I grabbed. I think there's like 13 there. Um, good little lot. Here's another item. Now this just, for the average person, looks like a bunch of rusty old hooks. But uh, they are, in fact, meat hooks. Early, early meat hooks. And uh, again, cast iron. Don't know if they would have been hand forged or not, uh, but they could have been. Fairly thick, fairly heavy. Um, they will need to be cleaned up. But again, these are the kind of things that can be used and repurposed for items just if you want to say hang up a 1960s Schwinn bike from your uh, ceiling. Um, this would look great doing it. Um, you can hang art from them just about anything. I've even seen people hang curtains with these before, although that's pretty uh, pretty heavy-duty stuff. But again, um, great pieces. Um, once they clean up, they'll, uh, they'll probably move out of here pretty quick. Um, and it was just a bucket full of them, so I don't even know how many is in there, but there's got to be 15, 20 of them. The other great thing that I found, and this was not something uh, that I'd actually seen before it is a bench vise although it is the mother of all bench vices it is enormous and i've never actually seen uh, a bench vise with this kind of uh leg that goes this far down uh, basically it would have been mounted on the side of a bench right here by this huge piece of metal it fully works uh, the surface on it is incredible i don't know if you can see the pitting in that or not but that uh, is the kind of thing you can't fake. And I imagine, again, a lot of this might have been, uh, might have been forged. Not 100% sure on that. But it does work. Um, I played with it for quite a while. I haven't seen any cracks in the cast, which is something you kind of have to look out for with cast iron. Uh, quite often it will crack. That's why a lot of this stuff did end up um, in scrap yards. But I didn't see anything in this. I haven't found any um, identifying marks from manufacturers yet, but I still have to go over the whole thing. But And it must weigh at least 80, 90 pounds, if not more. So, yeah, that was another great thing. And the thing is, is somebody could either just use this as a man cave decorative piece, but it is still a great vice. I mean, I'm sure you could bend metal or whatever with this. It's uh, It's a real solid piece. Picked up a couple of older screw jacks probably 1920s or 30s these were the kind of thing you would have seen on the older cars uh, maybe your model t's and things like that um, and they're cool little devices they got the the gears and this one's not quite set up right uh, but with the mechanics of these things um, they're nice little decorative pieces when cleaned up i'm going to try to see if i can actually get one to to work on here but there you go I apologize for my camera work in advance. I've never been good at doing the camera thing, but, but yeah.
But yeah, um, two different sizes, I think. One's a little smaller than the other. There are some, this one has patent applied for, uh, and there are some markings on there that I can't quite make out, but once I clean it up, I will. And these are great pieces. Again, you could do all kinds of stuff with this. Um, so yeah, these are things to look out for. I was pretty happy to come across those. Another great repurposing item are uh, this stuff out of here are these visible fiberglass. They're just sort of scoops more than anything else. Um, and the cool thing is if you look at them, you can see the fiberglass. Very similar to early 1950s fiberglass chairs, uh, the kind of thing you see coming out of Herman Miller, um, Eames chairs, as they're commonly known. Uh, but this actually came off of a grain uh, conveyor belt. So this thing would go into silos and just run the scoops on a conveyor belt and pull all the grain out. And um, there were a bunch of these sitting around. And they can serve so many different purposes. Um, they can just hang on your wall like so, bolted to the wall. You've got storage, magazines, um, you know, whatever you could want. Um, winter clothing when the kids come in and drop it off. Um, the sort of planters, if you want to drill a hole at the bottom, the, the ideas are endless. It's up to your creativity and what you can come up with, but you can see them all there. They need a good cleaning, uh, but I think once they come up, those are going to be, uh, someone's going to really enjoy putting those into their home. Uh, and again, because of that visible fiberglass, if you have a lot of mid-century furniture, uh, they do kind of look, come across as very modernish uh, once they'll clean up, so that's kind of nice. A few small items. Uh, never sort of overlook the small items um, because you can get some great stuff. Like this, this is uh, from Winnipeg. It's a uh, solder tin, Imperial solder tin. And there's weld wood glue. These are all metal. It's just little things to stick on your shelf. I had to grab these just because uh, I'm not overly familiar with Labatt's crystal. I know there, it was still going in the 1980s, but these look earlier. Um, and this little guy here, which is from, it's the, what is that? The Grand Prix of uh, Molson's Trois Rivieres. Uh, just a crew pass, which is kind of cool. Got a little Wrangler advertisement on there and an actual map of the uh, of the course, which is cool. This was one of my favorite finds. Um, it is a prob circa 1950s, maybe sometime between the 50s and 60s, although it does have a 1950s copyright date on there. Um, you can date Zippos if you use the internet. There are tons of um, sites that can help you uh, date the Zippo that you have. Usually it's based on the scroll, the way the uh, actual word Zippo is uh, written. Some have copyrights. This one's from the Niagara Falls uh, company of uh, Zippo, uh, which was the Canadian um, sort of affiliate of Zippo. But the nice thing about that is it comes with the original box, the insert, and doing things with one hand is kind of hard. There you go. The, uh, the original guarantee paperwork and all that stuff is in there. The Zippo's not in the best of shape. It's a little loose at the top, but still, it's, it's just a cool piece. You can't pass that up. And my favorite thing by far, if you were a kid who read comics in the late 60s or throughout the 70s at all, um, on the back of just about every comic was an ad for sea monkeys. And... Um, this is it. I'd never, I didn't even, you know, I've never actually seen one of these before, but it's copyright 1970. Uh, it has never been opened. Um, all the packages are right in there, and it's so great because on the back there's these really cool graphics and, and ads and stuff like that, which you can send away for. Uh, it's copyright 1970, so it is original, um, and that was just a really fun thing for me to find. A couple of beat up old cartoon magazines from the 60s. I mean, uh, they're not in the best of shape, but there's just great graphics in here and they're kind of funny. They'd be just good reader copies for somebody to have. So I had to grab those when I could. This is a little made in Japan thermometer. Unfortunately, I don't think the j thermometer is going to work anymore, but it's, uh, I think it's cast aluminum. Uh, nice kind of decorative die piece. Somebody could put up there for themselves. Um, 
So that was pretty much all of it. Oh, no, wait. I did get this, too. I should probably talk about this. This is a really nice circa 1960s Mountain Dew would have been a display rack. This would have had cross wire racks on it. Uh, and those um, would have had, you know, a slat rack on there to display the different the bottles of pop that people could pick up. Probably in a gas station, maybe in a grocery store, more than likely a gas station. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit rusted out at the bottom, but overall it's really nice. The sign itself cleaned up really well. I did get down to cleaning that. Um, but this again, you can just um, cut some wood and put that in there if you can't uh, come up or get someone to fabricate using metal shelves. And you can display all kinds of things on those. Oil cans, pop bottles if you have a collection, just about anything. I mean, it's a really great, really great piece. Again, super happy to find that. Picked up two ashtrays. Now, ashtrays for like the longest time were just, um, unfortunately, dead weight. Uh, smoking kind of fell out of vogue and uh, you couldn't move the things along. I mean, it was, it was really tough. With the legalization of the marijuanas in, uh, in Canada, I have seen a rise in sales of all kinds of smoking paraphernalia, ashtrays especially. Now these guys are your wire ashtrays, probably circa 1960s, I'm thinking. And uh, the great little pieces, uh, they need to be cleaned up. I might even touch up because some of them's got a bit of rust on the inside there. Uh, might even just stick them with a bit of rust oleum on them. And give them a quick cleanup. The cool thing about these is these have these plastic. Now I don't know if they're homemade and stuck on there, but I don't think so. Uh, sort of cup holders. Uh, this one's missing them, but this one still has them on there. You know, someone could take them off or leave them on. It's entirely up to them what they do with them. Uh, but just a, a cool pair of uh, floor ashtrays. I picked this up last week, um, and I just kind of wanted to show it because it was kind of cool. Private property, no trespassing sign. But if you look on there, that thing has been shot up with not pretty heavy caliber, but uh, certainly some, some pretty good pellet guns on there. Somebody's going to want to put that in their yard for sure. I know that. And then lastly, uh, I grabbed a whole whack of these. Let's see if I can pull them out. They're trucker caps. And unfortunately, I think these had... Um, the foam inside, but that foam was long gone. They're probably from the 1970s. Denim fronts, K Workman Limited, SO Agent, mesh backs, snap backs. Uh, trucker caps sort of um, come and go in terms of uh, styles, but they're always the ones that have uh, gas companies on them, uh, John Deere, any sort of farm work on there, uh, weird restaurants that have great graphics they always do really well so those are the kind of things so yeah basically that is uh just a small pick and again it's the kind of pick that gives you an idea that sometimes instead of seeing what the object physically is you can see its repurpose um, and give it a new life in a lot of cases so yeah uh i think i'm going to call that it for now i'll give you a scan of the store so you get an idea of what sort of stuff i do here there's some signs, a bunch of old rusty gold, mid-century furniture and art, and toys, and loads of records. Love the vinyl. Can't not. Oh, yeah. There's some toys from the 70s, 80s. Heck, even some from the 90s. All right. Well, that's it. If uh, you guys do see this up on uh, YouTube, and I actually do get around to uploading it, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button or like button or even just send me a comment about how I'm doing on these ones because this is sort of my first one uh, for my picks and things like that. Uh, let me know if I'm too long-winded because uh, my wife always tells me that. So maybe you can back her up. Have yourselves a good day.